Hello, I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility channel. And today on We Like Cheeses number two, we're looking at something called Saint Nuage, which is a French, Nuage means cloud in French. And this cream is supposed to be so light and fluffy, it's like a cloud. So this is a, pretty much only available through Whole Foods. It's very highly specialized. So I found out about this cheese from Liz Thorpe's The Book of Cheese, which is a wonderful resource and the cause of my uh, recent interest in cheese. Where she puts it on this uh, flavor scale. So this is approachability and flavor. These are the milder flavors over here on this scale. And this is the funkier or stronger flavors or not for everybody kind of flavors over here on this scale. And then availability is like every supermarket's gonna have some of these things. And then the specialty shop is gonna have this up here. So here's where St. Nuage is. So not widely available. You have to go to Whole Foods to get it, but it's not very far along on the flavor scale. It is approachable. It is friendly. And we're going to find out today. So I have had this out of the fridge for a couple of hours. So I'm just going to break into it and dump it out and uh, cut into it and find out how it tastes. So there's a little bit of liquid in here and it smells a little old and musty and it's very soft. I was going to dump it onto this little slate plate, slate cheese board, but I think I'll just leave it where it is. Let's see if I can stick this up as a sign or a banner. Now, my plan is to try to cut it in half. Oh, it's very fluffy, very soft, almost runny. So I'll try to mess with just a quarter of it. If I can even separate it from the bulk. Wow, it's like whipped butter. Interesting. So this cheese is made from cow's milk. It is a, a triple cream cheese, so it's above 70% butter fat. When you count uh, only the dry weight, not any moisture or liquid that's in here, water that's in here. So it is pretty standard for a craft creamery doing something special and giving it a name. That's very common in the cheese world for double and triple cream type brie-like cheeses. And this one does not use the uh, white papery rind that comes from Penicillium candidum is the rind organism, which is a mold, but this uses a yeast called Geotrichum candidum. So it has a yellowish cast color wise and the flavors are not uh, quite as mushroomy and they don't go off as easily. So you might get sweeter notes and less, a little less mushroomy. But there is a little funkiness here. Something is old. Something's been around a while. So this is interesting. This is the first Geotrichum cheese of the series. Salty and buttery. So, no, it's just fluffy like a, <laughs> like a cloud. It really is. That's a good name. So there is a brie-like quality to it for sure, but I'm not getting really the mushroom notes. Is it honey? Is it vegetal? I'm not sure what the extra flavors are, but if you try to, then I'll see if I can figure out here on this unsalted flatbread with a few seeds in it. It's certainly buttery, rich, creamy, thick. Even though it's light and fluffy, it's a little sticky at the same time. And there's extra notes from that uh, yeast organism on the rind. So 
So this was an eight ounce package. Let me find it. No, 6.3 ounces. And I had a price sticker on it. I think it was $12.99, but it's right across the front label. So I had to peel it off for photography. They say 38% fat content. Which sounds like the U.S. measurement or the U.S. system of measuring fat content. So almost all the brie-like cheeses have some cream added to the milk. It's just a matter of how much is added that will uh, affect the final consistency and the nature of the product. So this was $12.99 for the 6.3 ounces. And I am going to try it on, ooh, I don't know if I want to put it on a salty cracker. I think I'll do another flatbread. I'm going to try. It's a good match for the flatbread. The uh, overall uh, effect is Mo only modestly salty, but I'm going to put on some other item. This is crystallized ginger. So it's got a little sugar on it and it's got a sharp flavor. Unlike the cracker and unlike the cheese. So we will see if this works out as a pairing. Oh, the sharpness of the ginger is really mellowed out by all the creamy butter fat mouthfeel. And the salt didn't, didn't hurt a bit. The ginger popped a little with the salt. So you could recognize it. It's good pairing. That, that works out. Moderates all the strong points of both things. And the whole gamish was less salty and less gingery. And uh, wow, that was nice. So we'll try one more thing. I think I'll do a dried cherry or two. Got a little multi-grain cracker that has no wheat. And let me grab a couple of dried sour cherries and put those on. out well too the fruitiness of the cherries is coming through and it works well with the saltiness and the rich buttery mouthfeel of the cheese so that is a also a successful combination so this is wonderful stuff this is very friendly it's not going to be off-putting for people it doesn't really have much of a rind that you can see so there's the question of eating the rind won't even come up or even that there is a rind people won't know they'll just take it so this is fairly steep at something like between 30 and 35 and 40 bucks a pound but uh if you want to splurge a little bit this is very tasty stuff so remember to uh leave questions and comments down below like subscribe and click the bell to get notified when the new videos come out and i have to finished with one more bite. This is wonderful stuff. I can't say enough about it. Light, airy, what a texture. What a mouthfeel. It tricks you into thinking it's going to be light and fluffy and insubstantial and then it's just like butter. Oh. Forgot to cheers. Might be an excuse to eat another one. By the way, this was way past the expiration date of February 6th, 2021. Today is actually February 27th. So I am three weeks past that expiration date. And this 
is just fine. Cheers.